Latin American nations face weather phenomena, from fires in Argentina and Chile to heavy rains and floods in Brazil and Bolivia. Peruvian President Pedro Castillo called for a new round of talks between the country's political sectors. And in Mexico, the Federal Commission for Protection Against Health Risk authorized the Cuban Abdala vaccine for emergency use. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. Now we begin with the news. Uruguay declares an agricultural emergency due to drought in the country's fields. Meetings of the Agricultural Emergency Committee have been held to analyze the agricultural situation in the country. The decision was taken after a meeting between the Minister of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries and the President of the Republic of Uruguay, Luis Lagayepu, who announced the measure. Authorities are planning a meeting between the Minister of Livestock and members of the Congress of Mayors to coordinate the measures to be taken to address the issue. The drought affected the departments of Russia, Paysandú, Florida, Cerro Largo and Rio Negro. As of Wednesday, Bolivia has registered at least 15 deaths in six departments due to the heavy rains that have been affecting the nation for several days. According to the Vice Minister of Civil Defense, Juan Carlos Calvimontes, by order of President Luis Arce Catacora, the National Emergency Response Plan is being implemented to provide the necessary support to the more than 10,000 families affected by the floods and landslides in different regions. Local media have also reported that at least 3,000 hectares have been damaged and 380 houses affected, of which 80 collapsed. And the floods in Brazil leave at least 21 people dead, 400,000 affected and some 65,000 displaced. The heavy rains recorded in the northeast of the Brazil since the beginning of November have worsened since Thursday, when a dam located in the city of Victoria da Reconquista collapsed due to the rise of the rivers. To date, two dams have been destroyed, and according to data provided by the civil defense, there are 21 dead, 358 injured, and 116 municipalities affected. The last three fatalities have been registered in the last hours. A 60-year-old man who drowned on Sunday, a 33-year-old woman whose house collapsed early Sunday morning, and a 21-year-old man who was missing and whose body was found this Monday on the bank of a river. Chile's government declared an agricultural emergency for the municipality of Quillon due to the severity of the forest fires during the year, with a historic minimum of rainfall in large regions of the country. According to the National Forestry Corporation, the red alert persists for the municipality located in the central region of the Chilean territory, at the same time that an active fire with low intensity and propagation is reported in the advance front, while there are other sectors with intermittent outbreaks within the burnt area. In total, more than 2,100 hectares of natural vegetation were ignited during the last month out of the 28,000 hectares that affected the center and south of the Indian nation. So far, the Ministry of Agriculture has decreed an agro-environmental emergency due to water deficit in 226 communes of the country across nine regions, while there are other declarations of agricultural emergency because of production interruptions caused by bad weather and pests to which Quillon will be added as a result of the fires. We have declared an agricultural emergency due to the fire, which will allow us to have access to both sectoral resources through the Institute of Agricultural Development and the regional government funds. And we remain on topic. In Argentina, the Federal Council of Environment and the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development declare a fire emergency throughout the national territory.
for one year due to the extreme risk of forest and pasture fires, while some 300 firefighters and 17 aerial anti-fire aircraft are working to control the fires in Patagonia. The Secretary of Environmental Control and Monitoring, Sergio Federovsky, explained that the prolonged droughts, the shift of dry seasons in each season as a result of climate change are the causes of the fires and insisted on prevention as the most effective measure against these disasters. And we'll be right back after this very short break, so don't go away. Welcome back. Peruvian President Pedro Castillo called for a new round of talks between the country's political sectors. Castillo announced that the meeting seeks to solve issues such as economic reactivation, health measures, the return to classes and public safety. The head of state also assured that the country's political sectors must commit themselves to govern by and for the people, fostering political, economic and social stability. At least 10 sectors with representation in the parliament are expected to participate. The first round of talks took place on December 3rd, when no confidence motion against Castillo was being debated, which was rejected. The presidents of Russia, Vladimir Putin and Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, met this Wednesday to review the implementation of the 28 integration agreements signed in November. This is the sixth meeting between the two leaders during 2021, where they reviewed the implementation of 28 integration agreements signed last November during their last meeting. These agreements aim to deepen the interaction between Moscow and Minsk in the areas of taxation, customs and common energy markets. They will also work to establish common policies in the financial, industrial and agricultural spheres. The two countries have been advocating for the creation of a state union since 1996, but only three years ago did they make progress on these agreements, which their governments consider mutually beneficial. You suggested we will hold joint military exercises at the beginning of the year. Our military officials will finalize the dates in March or February. I don't know what dates they will choose. They are continuing to shock us with sanctions. There have been five sanction packages and they are speaking about a sixth. Though these sanctions are brainless and not needed by anyone, as we've actually increased our trade volume and our GDP has grown in this year of sanctions and the pandemic, Russia played a major role in this, as well as our other friends in the international arena, though in lesser measure. I publicly and genuinely thank you for this. Russia announced that the second pipeline of the Nord Stream 2 is ready for operation. Authorities of the Russian company Gazprom informed this Wednesday that the facility was operational on pressure and is ready to start functioning. The state that the Nord Stream 2 has the capacity to transport 55 billion cubic meters of gas per year, and it is the longest gas pipeline that passes under the sea in the world. In this context, Russian President Vladimir Putin emphasized that the launching of the pipeline will lead to lower gas prices in Europe, and the European authorities approved the startup. In November, German authorities suspended the certification of the infrastructure, citing legal issues, while the United States continues its policy of aggression against the initiative. The government of China stated Wednesday that it will maintain its stance on Taiwan's matters through 2022 and warned that it will take stronger measures to crush separatist attempts and reject interference in the country's internal affairs. China's Taiwan Affairs Bureau spokesperson Ma Xiaowan warned on Wednesday that Beijing will take drastic measures if the island moves towards independence. Ma said that it's possible that foreign intervention and successionist provocations could become more acute and intense in the coming months. The official also stressed that efforts to seek new forms of integrated development across the strait will continue.
This Tuesday, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, sent an end of year message in which he called for overcoming divisions and inequalities, wishing that the coming year will be one of recovery for humanity, humankind, and the planet. Comes 2022 with our hopes for the future being tested by deepening poverty and worsening inequality by an unequal distribution of COVID vaccines, by climate commitments that fall short, and by ongoing conflict, division, and misinformation. These are not just policy tests. These are moral and real-life tests. And they are tests that humanity can pass if we commit to making 2022 a year of recovery for everyone. After wishing for the recovery of the pandemic, the economies and conflicts, Guterres called on society to unite in solidarity and wish a happy year for people and the planet. Moments of great difficulty are also moments of great opportunity to come together in solidarity, to unite behind solutions that can benefit all people and to move forward together with hope in what our human family can accomplish. Together, let's make recovery our resolution for 2022, for people, planet, and prosperity. I wish you all a happy and peaceful new year. We move on to other topics. The Israeli army carried out a new attack against the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip. The border between Gaza and Israel had been quiet since the clashes last May. However, the Israeli army announced an attack on Hamas positions in retaliation for a lightly wounded civilian at the Gaza border. Local media confirmed the Israeli tank attack as well as the wounded of several Palestinian farmers during the operation. The events take place after the Israeli Ministry of Defense announced the completion of a 65 kilometers barrier to separate the two territories. And we have more stories coming up after this final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back. The Mexican Federal Commission for Protection Against Health Risk authorized the Cuban Abdala vaccine for emergency use. Authorizations issued by this commission are part of the national strategy of sanitary regulation and gives access to the greatest number of health products as long as the quality, safety and efficacy of the product are proven. All decisions from this regulatory authority are made on the basis of the technical and scientific evidence presented. The Committee of New Molecules met on the use of this vaccine and received a favorable technical opinion from the experts and also certified that it meets the quality, safety safety and efficacy requirements necessary for its application. St. Vincent and the Grenadines also accepted the use of the product and consequently other nations in the areas are prone to reviewing the likelihood of its use. The World Health Organization reported an 11% increase in the number of COVID-19 infections worldwide due to the spread of the Omicron variant in several countries. According to reports issued by the international organization during the week of December 20 to 26, around 4.9 million cases were confirmed globally, the highest number in almost seven months. Meanwhile, the number of deaths has remained stable over the last three months with 44,000 deaths. Experts affirm that these figures seem to indicate that the Omicron variant, despite being more contagious, is less serious than the Delta variant. The United States was the country that recorded the most infections during the last week, with more than 1.1 million cases, followed by the United Kingdom with 611,000 and France with 504,000.
On Wednesday, the World Health Organization warned that a tsunami of Omicron and Delta COVID-19 cases will pile pressure on health systems already being stretched to their limits. That Omicron being more transmissible, circulating at the same time as Delta, is leading to a tsunami of cases. This is and will continue to put immense pressure on exhausted health workers and health systems on the brink of collapse. I'm highly concerned First, that... New cases of COVID-19 have soared to their highest level of record at over 265,000 per day on average, a surge driven largely by the highly contagious Omicron variant. New cases per day have more than doubled over the past two weeks, eclipsing the old mark of 250,000 said in mid-January, according to data kept by John Hopkins University. The fast-spreading mutant version of the virus has cast a pall over Christmas and New Year's forcing communities to scale back or call off their festivities. Thousands of flights have been cancelled amid staffing shortages blamed on the virus. The threat of Omicron has spurred many U.S. citizens to get tested for COVID-19. Long lines at testing sites are reported throughout the country. In Italy, a study reveals that 70% of patients in serious condition due to COVID-19 were not vaccinated against the virus. According to a report published by the Italian Federation of Health Companies, FIASZE, the number of patients admitted to the intensive care units who have not been vaccinated increased by 46% in the last three weeks, while the number of vaccinated patients rose by only 19%. The study also reveals that the average age of hospitalized patients who have not been immunized is 63 years, while the average of those who have received the vaccines is 70 years. This data are provided at a time when the country is going through a new wave of contagions, which reached its peak on Tuesday with 78,313 cases per day. This Wednesday, Spain reported more than 99,000 new infections due to COVID-19. However, authorities are considering reducing quarantine time for patients with mild symptoms. This new number of infections exceeds the figure of 6 million people since the beginning of the pandemic. For her part, the Minister of Finance and Public Function, Maria Jesus Montero, stated that quarantine times could be reduced to five days if the disease is mild. Montero asserted that the idea will be carried out on the updating and the evolution of the pandemic as long as the decision was based on clinical evidence. She also reminded that the nation is facing the sixth wave of contagion. However, she assured that the situation is favorable for the nation due to the fact that 90 percent of the population has completed the vaccination schedule. And France has recorded more than 200,000 cases of COVID-19 in 24 hours. A new daily record, Health Minister Olivier Varane said on Wednesday as the Omicron coronavirus variant continues to spread. By the French Public Health Agency showed the continuous increase of the numbers of contaminations in our country. These figures are decent. There are 208,000 French people who have tested positive for COVID in the last 24 hours. I did a quick calculation before joining you. That means that 24 hours a day, day and night, every second in our country, more than two French people are diagnosed positive with the coronavirus. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.